Welcome back to Straight Talk. I'm Laurel Porter. We're getting a preview of the upcoming legislative session that begins in less than 10 days. Welcome once again to my guest, the Oregonian's political reporter, Gordon Friedman, Republican political strategist, Rebecca Tweed, and KGW political analyst, Len Bergstein. Once again, great to have you here. Thank you. As I mentioned at the top of the, the end of the last segment, there's been a lot of focus on charges of sexual harassment at the Oregon legislature. And State Senator Sarah Gelser publicly accused fellow Senator Jeff Cruz of touching her inappropriately over a period of years at the legislature. And Senator Gelser has become a national figure named by Time Magazine as one of its persons of the year as a silence breaker. So this is getting a lot of attention. And we should say that this isn't a partisan issue. It cuts across both parties in Oregon and nationally. Gordon, you've reported on this, what do you know? Where does the investigation stand? So my sources tell me that the investigation's ongoing. Um, it's supposed to be close to being finished. The contract that an investigator signed with the state um, says that they're supposed to finish it within the next couple of weeks. They could get an extension, but I haven't heard that that's what has happened. So likely the investigator will send a report to the legislature um, sometime after the session begins. And then that report will be considered by a special conduct committee, the Senate Conduct Committee, which can then have a hearing and decide whether to recommend Senator Cruz is punished either by censure, expulsion, or something else. And this could make a big splash also nationally because it has gotten a lot of national attention. And We're I would just add, it, it's not just Senator Gelser who has publicly accused Senator Cruz of sexual harassment. Also, Senator Elizabeth Steiner Hayward um, publicly accused Senator Cruz and um, in the records that have been submitted to the legislature on these accusations, um, they claim that as many as 15 women are ready to make accusations against Senator Cruz. And there have been calls for Senator Cruz to resign, and so far he hasn't resigned. Your candidate, New Bueller, has called for his resignation. What does this mean for Senator Cruz? How is he going to be received in the legislature? Sure. I mean, I, I think it's disappointing that more of his legislative colleagues have not called on him to resign, and I appreciate your mention that this is not a partisan issue. It really isn't. It's an issue of culture. Uh, and I think it will be very tense in the legislative, you know, in the Capitol and during this session. And I think that's unfortunate, but when people aren't comfortable in a work environment and they're not comfortable with their colleagues, that's what happens. And that's really why we need leadership to say this is not acceptable behavior. And as you mentioned, Representative Bueller is one of the first legislators to call for his resignation. And I hope more from both sides will do the same. He's been stripped of his committee assignments. Right. How effective can he be? And what does it mean for the Republican caucus in the Senate, Len? Well, actually, the Republican caucus uh, wrestled with this in terms of uh, who they were going to select. A couple of uh, candidates who might be in charge of the Republicans kind of uh, had to have a stalemate and uh, mm -hmm. because they, the caucus couldn't decide how to, how to vote on this particular issue. So it's going to have a big impact. I think Senator Cruz is not going to have a lot to say in the next legislative session. Mm -hmm. Wider issue is this is a public building. It's kind of a public accommodation. How do the rules affect public accommodation? The le legislators and their staff people enter into private contracts, not through the state, but private contracts. So how does the state establish uh, codes of conduct that affect those kinds of pu private con uh, contracts within a public building. And there's a lot, I think Gordon is right that there's a lot of, a, a lot of stuff around this issue. And I think Rebecca's right that it could have potentially uh, negatively impact the kind of good relationships between Democrats and Republicans uh, during the session. Could throw a big wrench in the, in the, in the session at a bad time. Because the friends I'm talking with say to me that this stuff is going to come forward, as Gordon said, right in the middle. And yeah. it won't be the day that they start, but it'll be almost immediately after they start. Yeah. Big issue. Yeah. We'll keep our eyes big, on that. Yeah, we'll be watching issue. for yeah. that. One thing I would add, if I just can, is that I, this issue goes beyond just members of the legislature who may have a complaint. Um, after I broke the story that Senator Cruz had been removed from his committees and uh, that the allegations were coming forward, I got a lot of phone calls from women who work in the Capitol in all kinds of roles talking about how they feel the culture needs to improve so that it's a safe, healthy workplace for women. Um, so that's going to be an issue that uh, officials keep grappling with. And a big topic in workplaces across Oregon yeah. and the nation. On a separate subject, there's a new committee started by Senate President Peter Courtney called the Joint Committee on Student Success, modeled after that successful transportation committee that was able to shepherd through a bill, a $5.3 billion bill. Does this have a chance of being successful, Len? Oh, I think so. And uh, legislators are very optimistic about this, in part because they always like to fight the last war. I mean, in the last war, they fought it. They fought successfully trying to get a transportation policy together. So the idea of having 
you know, a couple of uh, legislators intensely working and reaching out beyond the halls of the Capitol for a long period of time and then kind of coming forward with a package and then kind of working it through is a model that they looked at and they said, wow, we did pretty well. <laughs> we did a good job on this thing. So I think they're anxious to kind of get that going together. My understanding is that it's Roblin and uh, Senator Roblin and Barbara Smith Warner that are the, co the, the, the chairs of that or whatever it is. But anyway, you got a couple of smart people on that committee who really understand both the policy and also the outreach of this thing. So I'm, I think people are optimistic. Well, about hoping this. that they can improve graduation rates. We're yeah. only about two minutes left in the show, but I did want to touch on a couple of interesting bills that you wrote about, Gordon. One, the National Popular Vote Compact that would uh, require that the only the candidate that got the popular vote, won the popular vote, would get Oregon's seven electoral votes. The other bill is one this week that Senate Majority Leader Ginny Burdick introduced that would require presidential candidates to have to release their tax tax return, something Donald Trump didn't do, in order to appear on the Oregon ballot. If that passed, then Donald Trump wouldn't be able to be on the Oregon ballot in 2020 unless he released his returns. Is this something you think will get any traction? It's possible. Um, the national popular vote issue, it, it's very possible that could pass this year because the main person blocking it was Senate President Peter Courtney, and he told me last week that the way that this bill is written, he'll support it. Um, if the legislature passes it, the, uh, the, the question would then actually go on to the November 2018 ballot, so Oregon voters would have the final say. In terms of the tax returns, this is the second time this bill has been introduced. Um, it's unclear to me if it really has a shot, um, but we might see it get a hearing and there'll be a, a discussion about whether this is possible. The legislature's legal office has actually raised questions about if this is legal because you can't add requirements to run for president that's a constitutional issue. We only have about uh, 15 seconds for each of you to just give me a final thought about the legislative session. Rebecca. Sure, I think the legislative session uh, needs to be focused on bringing under control the runaway cost of the pension system and fixing the issues that we have with Medicaid. That's really what we've trusted these folks to do. And if we're going to see our state go forward and put investments into education where it belongs, uh, we have to bring these costs under control. 15 seconds, Len. I think we send uh, legislators down to the, to the Capitol to tackle the problems that are in front of them. There are a bunch of problems they ought to tackle those and not just say we're only going to handle a small number of things and uh, take a whack at it and the lead, I think the Oregonians will pat them on the back for trying to tackle big problems. Len Bergstein, Rebecca Tweed, Gordon Friedman, thank you for joining us here on Straight Talk. Next week we talk the Olympics with Professor Jules Boykopp. We'll see you next week for Straight Talk.